Hey, it's me, your favorite washed up cybergrind internet clown. I know I already made a video on the Sawblade Launcher way back. Thing is, during that time, I had somewhat a mixed outlook on the Sawblade Launcher. But nowadays, let me tell you what, I won't even leave my house without this fucking thing. So, what does that have to do with SawCon? You know, better question, what is SawCon? You know, the, specifically the cybergrind one. Well, at its core, it's kind of just jargon for Sawblade Trap. Your next question is probably, hey, why is it called that? <clears throat> And lastly, why is this important? And does this really need a whole ass video guide? Well, due to the nature of the Sawblade launcher as well as SawCon, there's actually a crap ton of optimization that can go into your placement of these traps, and hopefully this video will help you optimize or learn some. So, here is the SawCon guide. The Cybergrind one. So first of all, let's just get the simpler things out of the way and work up from there. Obviously, we're gonna need to have the blue saw blade launcher. However, the green one, while optional, is most of the damage that goes into these traps. So let's just assume that you have it. First of all, you know, obviously, enemies can have magnets attached to them. Well, duh, you know, you gotta start somewhere if you're starting off simple. So just be aware which enemies you attach it the magnets onto. In my opinion, sword machines are great targets because of how aggressive they are. If you're looking for something more passive, maybe a serb or a malicious face, they don't move around as much, but hey, sometimes that's what you need, right? Also, don't forget that you can set up Sawcons during the time between stages. It really does not take that long to set up, since it only takes one silver saw to fully charge up the overheat saw. It's not gonna kill every serb and sword machine, but damage is damage, and free time is free time. Now let's get a bit more complicated, and also subjective, which is the placement. Now, when placing down your saw cons, a few things you should keep in mind is the amount of enemy traffic going through that area, your surroundings, such as walls or bounce pads, the height of the trap, and lastly, whether or not you should even be placing a trap, you know? The first one is pretty self-explanatory, you know, what good is a saw con trap if no enemies walk by? I'll tell you right now, it's no fucking good. With things like walls, some traps may change their from their circular motion and cause bounce and its the trajectory gets all weird and janky, it's annoying but in my opinion, it's not super detrimental most of the time. Bounce pads affect magnets. So obviously, don't try to set one up on one because it'll just bounce up. It won't work unless you put it up before they spawn, which is really finicky. As for height, make sure, as previously stated, it can even hit enemies. Like, I appreciate the enthusiasm, but other than some mind flares or malicious faces, I don't think you're catching a lot of fucking fish, dude. Lastly is the thought process part. Please understand that having a singular saw contract will not kill all 12 sword machines and two insurrectionists for you. I mean, it's amazing crowd control, like amazing. But if there are 20 virtues and you're setting up your second like saw contract of the wave, I think you should probably go deal with those virtues instead. With that being said, you're probably thinking, okay, so like where? Well, don't worry, I'll give you some common examples of common terrain patterns to use it on. High ground that enemies funnel into is obviously an amazing choice, bonus points if it's centralized. Corners or extended platforms also work great, tall enough to hit enemies like sword machines and serbs, but the lesser husks can still run up and die. Thin pillars are also worthy contenders, the adjustability on height is very lenient. Also, you can go a bit higher if there's larger enemies, a little lower if there are husks, but because the pillars are so thin, you're gonna get that circular motion. Setting up saw cons near the edge of the map is also amazing if you love to play off arena because at that point the enemies are guaranteed to mindlessly run at you and wait at the edge. Free damage, huh? Also, if you're using the overheat saw, sometimes you can just fire it between two walls and have it bounce. It's a bit finicky and super map dependent, but if you really don't want to spend that magnet or you just don't want to set it up, well hey, it's definitely an option. And if you really are that much of a visual learner, here, I got some more specific shots and examples for you. If they have some added perk or quirk, you know, it's like hard to set up, I'll be sure to let you know, so here you are. Well, that's all about I could really fit into this video. However, Splendid made an amazing dock, not only on the Sawcon, but also includes some amazing Sawcon spots. Thank you, Splendid, so much. 
It also says pre-wrath, but honestly, I'd say it's still quite relevant, and if anything, has gotten better. Which is probably because of the ferryman, and also while not included in wrath, Sockons also melt insurrectionists, so in my opinion, just ignore that addendum. One last thing, don't forget whether intentional or not, you can slam on the magnet to break it, so yeah, if you're gonna set up a trap, don't slam on the magnet immediately, that kind of defeats the purpose. So, closing reminder, slash notes, this isn't gonna solve all your problems, okay? It will help, though. Again, the adage of the day is, damage is damage, and alt-tabbing between waves is a bit of a waste when you can just pause. So hopefully, those of you reluctant to try out the Sawblade have some newfound inspiration, or maybe you're a Sawblade enthusiast who continues to win, right? I know I keep winning, it's kinda hard winning this much. I don't know. All I can hope is that this video helped somewhat, or in any way, shape, or form. So who knows, maybe this will help you finally beat your PB or break wave 50. I don't know, let me know if you do, though. that'd be kind of cool. But again, you know, don't expect this to do something, you know, crazy. It's like, it's not going to make your dick bigger or something like that. You know, it's, it's not that crazy, all right? <laughs> unless, <laughs> uh, uh, unless, right? <laughs> There's nothing left.